we're basically uh, just trying to get this saw, uh, this log kind of trimmed into being a round log. And so you got to do a little bit of chainsaw whittling to get them kind of shaped up to where you can actually use them. Uh, part of the thing is fighting me, I believe this log is frozen. Um, it was cut, I believe it's been down for almost two years. So that tells you how much water, you can see all this is wet. So it's dried in, uh, you know, around, I'm gonna go with here and say about three inches it's dried and the rest of it's still full of water, which is, uh, that's cottonwood. It does make pretty decent boards if you can dry it. And that's the, that's the kicker is drying the stuff. This up here is why we're having kind of such a trouble trying to get this thing lined up. Because the, uh, the guys that are using this for chainsaw practice have pretty much destroyed it as a log. And I'm going to try to work with this massive cut here and only let it ruin a, you know, a small number of boards instead of the whole tree. And then I'm going to square my track to the log uh, because that's one of the cool things with this saw. You can, you can actually square it to however the log wants to lay. So we'll do that next. So I'm just trying to uh, get the saw and the log set up to get the optimal amount of lumber out of it. Uh, and for some reason this log is kind of more difficult than most, but uh, trying to get a, an eyeball on which path you want the saw to go through it. So we're right up against starting here. We'll see. This thing hasn't been ran in a number of months. So.
uh, a weighing edge is what they call it. So, now you adjust this to zero, and in this case we're going to cut a two inch plank. So I'm going to move this uh, two inches. And you want to stay pretty consistent on where you, uh, exactly where you turn to. That's what happens when you're, uh, these big logs are kind of tough when they're gnarly like this. See my, uh, the front of my saw is bound up on the top of the log. So ideally, you really want to find a flat side to start with and that, uh, this log is probably not even worth the fight we've had with it today. <laughs> So one very cool feature of this saw is uh, how the teeth um, are sharpened. So you just pull them out like that and this gives you uh, the tooth. I don't remember, uh, I bought two complete sets for the big blade and one for the little blade for about a hundred bucks. And if you don't hit nails, they last forever and they're very easy to uh, to sharpen and stuff. I have the uh, just the hand sharpener. Works best if you're on a bench vise, but it works otherwise too, so. And as you can see, I did an absolute number. The nail just flattened the end of this tooth. Uh, so, Normally, it it's literally just takes seconds to sharpen a tooth. In this case, it might take a lot more. So, much better. Basically looks like a horse's tooth, for those that would know. Hotter than a pistol. So, to reinsert, and this is a good idea to, uh, to oil. I'm not going to for this one, because these were actually recently changed. You just uh, set the tooth back in. This would be something that'd be kind of cool if they made a way to kind of hold your blade um, better. But, and this is definitely something that takes a little bit of feel. I, I think a person could screw stuff up if they weren't careful here, but. You just push it till it seats and pull the pin. You got a new sharp tooth. Um, I haven't ran this saw enough to really know what, what it would produce when you're really pushing for production. Uh, but Bailey Egan told me that, uh, that about at noon, I believe, is when he said they, uh, you know, if you ran it all morning, that at noon you'd stop and sharpen the teeth. And I think that's probably about right. Obviously, depending on how much dirt is in the wood you're cutting and, and all of that. The reason why you got this saw, it uh, felt like the price was really pretty right. This is actually like a 1960s or 70s saw. Um, and uh, for one, as most men know, everybody wants to own a sawmill. Uh, so that was part of it, just kidding. Uh, but I got sick and tired of, I never had a board around the place. And so if I was trying to crib cattle out of a water tank or anything, I, it was like, uh, you know, I had to go buy this stuff and you couldn't just fix things when they broke. Um, and so, uh, I went ahead and, uh, this is the type of thing that a guy, if he's not trying to go into the sawmill business, 
um, you can definitely pick up some partners. I don't think anybody's gonna wear this saw out. And uh, so me and four other guys, uh, my brother and a couple of our close friends uh, went in and, and I think we were around $1,700 a piece on this saw. And so I figure we can all make that money back uh, through the course of our projects. And um, so yeah, that's why we got into it. Uh, I got sick and tired of never having a board. But the one thing I do find with it is uh, you either need to have some logger buddies or you need to go logging. And sometimes I find uh, it's, it's tough for me to find the time to do that. So if you're uh, trying to make the commitment, be advised that, that uh, in order to really operate this, you're gonna need a big pile of wood. This is the type of quality you can turn out on this mill. Um, and uh, the thing with the cottonwood is, man, uh, you've got to dry it right. And so this here is some stuff that I had kind of left over in a log and I just cut it for stickers for in the future that I could put in between like these guys here. Um, you can't really see it here, but they're buried. But uh, there's a, a lot of really good boards. Um, that I'm able to get out of out of us, you know, just one big, you know, fallen tree, and uh, I mean these are formidable plank. And if if you can get them to dry right, uh, I think cottonwood's really good lumber. Um, here's some elm that I cut, uh, kind of. Again, it was just a piece that uh, uh, Hesser's Tree Service in town had cut down. Um, <coughs> they uh, do a lot of tree removal. So I just kind of put a bug in his ear that when they got into something that would make uh, a log, I was interested. So this was a, a pretty massive chunk of elm, and uh, it, but it forked really early. So we just had a short piece. So I cut, I don't know how many boards there are here, but there's a lot of uh, hardwood shelving. So for just a few dollars. Uh, and when this saw is tuned up and everything's kind of right, and you, you get your head wrapped around what you're doing, uh, it's really quite enjoyable. You're just kicking out a board every pass. I don't know if we quite got that on the video, running out of daylight, but uh, I mean, it'll it'll bring a board back every pass. I think it's it's just a lot quicker than a lot of your uh, band saws and stuff. Um, very portable. You can take the saw to the lumber and then, uh, to the timber and then haul the lumber away. And so all your slash is dealt with uh, on site. So um, it's quick to set up, quick to run. Uh, and if a guy just kind of carves out a little bit of time, you can make a lot of wood. What we need to do around here is, uh, yeah, I just get a lot of wood for projects and, uh, and little chunks of fence here and there. Um, and uh, some of the guys that went in on it with me, you know, they wanted things like to do some yard fence and some, uh, you know, decks and things like that. And uh, if you cut the lumber as cheap as we're able to do with this, you can actually redeck it every so often if you need to. You don't have to go and buy, uh, you know, thousands of dollars worth of decking. Um, you know, they have the plastic uh, decking, but that still takes wood underneath of it. Nobody, you can't build the whole deck, even if you surface it out of the plastic boards, you, you're still not, you don't have a deck. So I think you get something that's a little more of a, uh, a something that's a little more of a long-term product out of um, just enough you know, good heavy duty, uh, rough cut to lumber. So, uh, yeah, I like the mobile dimensions, a lot of fun to run.